Welcome to the Three Point Connection. If you didn't know, my name is Tommy. <clears throat> this uh, video is on your uh, Impact Live event. Uh, I should say Impact Live edition of Impact on the uh, Destination America. And I'm just going to give you the hits and misses of, of the uh, event. Dirty Hills versus the Wolves. Feels a bit redundant uh, to keep giving these matches. Well, called hits, but these guys deserve it since uh, they have put on a showcase of tag team wrestling gems uh, the past few months. Ever since the Hardys had to vacate the titles, the past two matches told a good story of the Austin Aries and Bobby Roode trying to ad adopt heel tactics to give uh, them the edge over the Wolves, and that ended uh, added a dimension that was has been uh, kept this series interesting. Jeff Jarrett's TNA return would have. Uh, <clears throat> who would have thought that, that in 2015 Jeff Jarrett would be drawing so much interest as a babyface in the family that he had he and his father founded. Uh, this was a very cool surprise that wasn't publicized, but still cool nonetheless. While Jarrett never got over as a top heel like he wanted to. He has shown glimpses of awesomeness as an honest baby face in this promo with him and his wife, Karen, felt very heartfelt and genuine. What was also cool about his promo was it hearkened to the glory days of TNA when the world thought that TNA could have a chance as a viable de competitor altercation to WWE and was a refreshing stroll through memory lane to longtime TNA fans. Jarrett is also very good at holding information back to be revealed at the appropriate time. That built anticipation as to what this Jeff W. TNA Business Association might lead to, and TNA could anticipate. Uh, <clears throat> Uh, any any uh, any sort. Bram versus Vader. Okay, Vader wasn't good in the ring, but the hit uh, for the delightful cameo by Vader, and also for the return of Matt Morgan, who looked pretty good, given that he retired from pro wrestling. The only downside with this Bram versus TNA Legends thing is that Bram isn't gaining much when he has to sell beatings from his opponents, but at least his current gimmick gives him something to do that is somewhat relevant. The problem with him selling too much gives him a Heath Slater 2012 versus Legends vibe. And that that vibe should be associated by the monster Ram. Kurt Angle versus Matt Hardy. This was a pretty good TV match, especially for Matt Hardy, who got to showcase a bit of what he can do as a singles wrestler in TNA. This was also about also a television match, so they didn't have to go all out. But Matt Hardy still looked strong, giving his best effort against the world champ. Another reason for his for this hit, we didn't get a hot shot main event again, which helps TNA in their pacing, building up to this EC3 versus Angle match. To me, eh, Hardy would uh, deserve the title more than. EC3 ever would. Uh, <clears throat> TNA has taken their time not making every show pay-per-view worthy, where every world title feud would uh, before this had some sort of big match every week without proper build-up. <clears throat> Here's where TNA had their misses. Low-key versus Grado versus T Tigre Uno. TNA is eventually going to bring back the X-Division to prestigious levels, right? Wrong. It was a bit disappointing, but this filler five-minute match was for the X-Division Championship. Not to mention the des designated job guy, Tigre Uno, was the one to win the title belt without TNA even giving the guy any backstory in his quest, or lack thereof. For the title, what's funny is, last year after Plan C was invoked, Low key defeated three enhancement guys to win the X, title, the X division title, and one of those enhancement guys was T. Gray Uno. Mm. 
May we, Dixie Carter, thinks green paint means prestigious. The beatdown clan and the rising brawl? The beatdown clan seemed held, held back in the rising, seemed to be dead in the water at this point. I felt like well, we've seen this brawl several times this year, and it's useless, leading to nothing. <coughs> Drew Galloway has to break away from this as a singles wrestler because he's being wasted in his position where he just brawls for no reason. With the BDC at this point, the Hernandez return was a nice surprise, but it would be interesting to see what they have in store for him now that he's reunited with his LAX tag team partner, Homicide. Once Homicide recovers from a solid shoulder injury, maybe they will be reformed. Slam of Mercy build up. While TNA did a good job hyping the next week's show, they have done a a solid build to one of their few pay-per-views. It was nice to have the returns, but they just come off as too little too late. As far as the event was concerned, does TNA not want to make money when they have an opportunity to do so right in front of, your, right in front of them? The TNA Slam Reverse pay-per-view takes place on Sunday in Orlando, Florida at the Universal Studios, the event headlined by the King of the Mountain match. Of course, starts at 7 p.m., Ring of Honor color commentary. Uh, Steve Carino was interviewed by Mark Madison of NewsHub.com. By the way, that was all TNA had from uh, uh, this past week of their live event, uh, live episode. Well, uh, back to the news of uh, uh, Steve Carino being interviewed by Mark Mad Madison of NewsHub.com. Follow highlights interview can be found at the new the-NewsHub.com. Carino comments on his time with Omega. Well, Omega was like a collection of indie guys in North Carolina. And myself, I, I had lived in Pennsylvania. Of course, this is from the interview. But I was making a lot of trips to North Carolina. Joey Mercury was in Virginia. And he had uh, just started and he would meet, meet me on the way. And my, Matt Hardy had, had this vision of let's do something that no one else is going to do. Now you got to remember that this is 1997, where there wasn't a Ring of Honor, and ECW was finding its legs and still a little more hardcore than anything. So Matt had his had this grassroots idea of every match has to be like a barn burning stuff uh, like that, and he and Matt thought that uh, me and Joey Mercury and CW Anderson would be great as the guy selling. The old school first. People always ask, where did the old school character begin with? And I had those ideas, and then right from Omega first. Comments on his time in ECW when I came there. Were all, they were always there was always no no promises. I came in as just an uh, underneath guy. I was Nova's friend, and this was a right after November to remember 1998, and they were looking for new guys, and Paul wanted to build new guys. So they had Reckless Youth. That was a guy that they wanted, and I was after that. Well, I was the afterthought. The guy was uh, Nova's buddy. Here is pretty good, and he's got an anti-hardcore thing. All right, bring him, in, bring him to the arena and do a quick tryout match. That's how I won my job. The little things would come up and happen, whereas Candido would mess up, and pa uh, Paul would look at me like, Steve, you can't talk. Let's do this thing with Taz. And then Cadido would be back and uh, then he would he would be fine. And then I'd be pushed down a little bit and then Cadido would mess up again. And then all of a sudden I'm back. There was a time where no one remembers where I had, had Rhino and Tajiri and Cadido couldn't come back. And all of a sudden I had no one and Cadido had Rhino and Tajiri. Then three weeks later he'd mess up again. And then I'm back without explanation. It was just like I was the to-go guy, go-to guy on his future in pro wrestling. If you would ha have asked me this a couple of years ago, I would have said the game plan has always been for Ring of Honor to be economic television for the Sinclair Broadcasting Channels. I would have never thought that we would have done something with the New Japan. I've never thought that uh, the replica belts would will come and that they would have taken the 17th chance at iPay-Per-View because of all the problems 
that we had, and I would have ever thought that uh, we have done regular traditional pay-per-views, and it wasn't all all in the business plans, that they all got together, and this is good, and houses are up, and merchandise licensing are, and, and being sold, and let's try this uh, for me, you just got to keep moving forward, little steps, just like they're doing, whether the next step is a video game, whether the next step is an action figure, whether the next step is four weeks, weekends a month instead of three. Whether it is a test of, hey, Tuesday and Wednesday work, uh, working, maybe we should start thinking Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday instead of Friday and Saturday. <clears throat> that was it for that. Uh, National Wrestling Alliance issued the following press release to Wrestling, Pro Wrestling .net. The National Wrestling Alliance, NWA, has announced its latest and most ambitious project to date, NWA Classics 24-7, and it is scheduled to be launched on July the 4th. What's more American than hot dogs, apple pie, and the NWA? Asked is uh, NWA President R. Bruce Stark. This is the pro a project that we were extremely excited about. It's something that we, we have been investing in and working over for five years. We believe that once it's launched, NWA Classics 24-7 will be very well received. The vintage collection of wrestling videos is from the personal library of legendary Houston wrestling promoter Paul Bosch <coughs> and uh, compromises, compromises, comprises matches from the late 60s to 1986 featuring some of the most legendary wrestlers of all time. Paul Bosch, or Bosch, how you pronounce the name, brought in the very top wrestling talent from around the world, and this collection features them in some of the greatest NWA matches ever seen. Some of the matches being being released the first month on NWA Classics 24-7 include Harley Race vs. Andre the Giant for the NWA World Title, Butch Reed vs. Magnum TA, NWA World Title Match, Flair vs. Wahoo McDaniel, Kevin Von Eric vs. Chris Adams, Dorian Terry Funk vs. Mel Mascaris and Jose Lothario, Gino Hernandez vs. Ivan Putsky, Butch Reed vs. Buddy Landell in a shoeshine match, Ivan Putsky vs. Abdullah, Brad Armstrong vs. One Man Gang, NWA World Title Match, Ric Flair vs. Terry Taylor, another World Title Match, Ric Flair vs. Butch Reed. Nick Bockwinkle vs. Bruiser Brody, $20,000 two-ring battle royal. Plus, early Shawn Michaels footage, Junkyard Dog, Jake DeSec Roberts, Hacksaw Jim Duggan, The Rock and Roll Express, and much, much more. NWA President, President Bruce Tharp followed up with an e email noting that the NWA Classics Library consists of the complete ball, Paul Bosch, Houston Wrestling Library, and will be available for $8.99 per month or $99.99 for the year. He stressed that the matches listed are just a sample of the 50 matches in the first month's release. They intend to update the website with 30 new matches every month. The website will be available next week in advance of the July 4th launch date at nwaclassics.com. Pro Wrestling Guerrilla results. Courtesy of PW Ponderings. Tommaso Ciampa defeated Johnny Gargano in match number one, match number two. Joey Ryan and Candice LeRae defeated Monster Mafia. Biff Music defeated Timothy Thatcher. Roger Stone defeated Mike Bailey to retain the PWG Championship. Brian Cage defeated John Silver. Zack Sabre Jr. defeated Chris Hero. And the Young Bucks in the main event defeated Andrew Everett and Trevor Lee to win the PWG Tag Titles. TNA Tape. Right, uh, some events on uh, June 27th and 28th at Universal Studios. EC3 defeated Kurt Angle to win the TNA title at the Impact TV Wrestling tapings on Thursday, supposedly. I'm getting different dates of different tapings, the results, and what have you. The Wolves defeated Bobby Roode and Austin Aries to win the TNA tag titles. And your 30-minute 30 30, uh, 30 Ironman match which was the fifth and final match of their best of five series. Neither result was a major surprise. TNA officials have done a nice job of building up EC3 since he arrived in the company. Here's hoping they give him in-ring credibility by having him win without the usual heel shenanigans 
more often than not. And thanks to contributor from .NET in the building, Jacob, for both updates. And the TV tapings from the 28th from Orlando, Florida, Universal Studios by .NET reader Miller. Explosion taped. Josh Matthews came out for alone for the commentary for Explosion. Velvet Sky defeated Madison Rain. Velvet Pin Rain after hitting her finisher. Impact tapings. Brooke beat the, uh, Marty Bell to retain the TNA Knockout title. Show open with the dollhouse making their entrance. Gail Kim Vignett distracted Bell, allowing Brooke to hit a face buster for the win and retain her title. Dixie Carter came out and announced Jeff Jarrett as the newest inductee into the Hall of Fame. Ooh. Josh Matthews and the Pope made their way to the unannounced table. EC3 made his, made his way out with the TNA title, accompanied by Tyrus. Next out was Bobby Lashley, two massive cheers, surprisingly. Match number two, Bobby Lashley defeated Tyrus. Lots of uh, Funkasaurus ch chants early on. EC3 joined on commentary. Lashley performed an impressive electric chair drop on Tyrus and then finished him off with a spear. Pope and Josh headed to the back. So that must have been something or whatever. Austin Aries made his entrance, made it clear he was not in a good mood. Little kids gave him the what treatment? Uh, he talked down. He talked down Bully Ray, which prompted him to then make his entrance. They went back and forth as, uh, with Aries, claiming that he deserved to be the number one contender to the TNA title. When that was shot down, he brought up the Dirty Heels, deserving a TNA tag title match then. Billy Ray responded by offering a next division title match. Aries disagreed with that offer. Rockstar Spud made his entrance to, to, to a great response. They bickered about option C. Aries said that Spud has nothing to show for himself in TNA, then challenged Spud to a match to prove himself. Bully made the match official with a stipulation that if Aries loses, then he leaves Impact Wrestling. Aries agreed, but if he wins, he wants the right to the Rockstar name because Spud doesn't deserve it. Aries then nailed Spud with a cheap shot and headed to the back. Jeremy Borash announced that there will be a steel cage tonight as well as a Hall of Fame ceremony. Number two, Eli Drake defeated Drew Galloway. Galloway took the fight to Drake in the entrance aisle. Drake rolled Galloway up and held the tights for the win. Drew chased him off to the back afterwards. <clears throat> Ethan Carter III made his entrance again. He cut a promo bashing from Jeff Hardy and his broken leg. He then, then mentioned Matt Hardy taking his brother's place but not being championship material. Jeff made his entrance to a huge pop. The crowd chanted, welcome back. Jeff ran down EC3 with insults and popped in front of the crowd to boo him. He introduced his brother, Matt, who was out next to, to a similar reaction. The crowd chanted, Matt for champ. Matt discussed his brother and himself discussing stipulations for the title match. Matt jumped to ringside and started pulling out a table, a ladder, and then a chair. The crowd went crazy for the TLC idea, but they also chanted that they want more. Jeff took a seat in one of the chairs and announced it would be a full Metal Mayhem match. And then Bully agreed to, to no outside interference. They had a stare down to end that segment. Bam made his interest holding Mr. Anderson's DTEX microphone. Mr. Anderson was out next and ran down to the, the, to the ring to, uh, to fight. Anderson scored the pin with a small package. Bam followed him up the ramp and laid him out with a, with a, with a microphone. Up next was the Hall of Fame induction ceremony. Mike Tanay was introduced to handle the ceremony. Dixie Carter made her entrance next. Jeff Jarrett was introduced to a nice round of applause. And then Jarrett spoke about his accomplishments and started thanking everyone specifically. Various wrestlers appeared on stage, including Shane Helms and Al Snow. And applauded as Jeff and Karen Jarrett made their departure. The dollhouse again made their entrance. Gail Kim was out next with a new theme song and entrance. Gail defeated the dollhouse in a three-on-one handicap match. Terry Terrell ran away part, uh, partly into the match, leaving it the two-on-one handicap. Gail Kim scored the pinfall over Marty Bell. Kurt Angle made his, made his entrance to a respectable reaction and cut a usual promo about getting the 10 title back. He then said he saw a doctor and learned he had a tumor in his neck and that must be surgically removed. 
He said, when he recovers and returns, he's coming for EC3. Eric Young's music interrupted him, and he made his entrance. Uh, he spoke about how many times he gave Angle a pile driver and claims he should get credit for the neck tumor. The crowd chanted boring for some unknown reason to me. And he said his this is nature's way of telling Angle that his time is up. And then he attacked Angle. He attempted to pile drive Angle outside the ring. But Chris Melendez made a save. Young backed off and then attacked Melendez from behind. He hits the pile driver outside on Melendez for the massive heat from the crowd. Rockstar Spud defeated Aries. Spud picked up the victory after hitting his finisher off the top turnbuckle after the match. Aries raised Spud's hand and hugged him. Based on Aries playing to the crowd after the match and, and bowing gracefully, he must be leaving for a while. Match number five, Jay Storm defeated the newly named Mahabil, uh, Mahabali Shara by disqualification. James Storm was introduced as he made his entrance carrying a noose. Shara had no entrance music and wrestled in jeans and sneakers and screamed a lot. Storm got uh, the cue after nailing Shara in the head with a cowbell tied to the end of the noose. I'm not sure what purpose of the match served. The staff started bringing out everything for the full Mayhem, Mayhem TNA title match. As Matt Hardy was out first, and then introduced Jeff Hardy for a second. This was followed by Ethan Carter the third. Match number six. Ethan Carter the third defeated Matt Hardy in a full Mayhem match to retain the TNA title. Tyra stayed, stayed backstage. Per the nobody at ringside stipulation, Ron and Don Harris were watching the match from ringside. Hmm. Yes, former TNA. Guys are back in TNA. Uh, uh, EC3 retained after pushing Hardy off the ladder and grabbing the title. A pretty intense match. Matt was favoring in his knee and held, had to be held walking uh, to the back after the match. Not sure if that's a legitimate injury or just was selling. Kenny King made his interest uh, to cut a promo about himself, then shifted his attention to Hernandez, which prompted him to walk into the ring air arena. They sized up each other, but MVP interrupted them. He talked some, in, some sense into them, but Kenny King stormed off, all amateur-like. Chris Melendez made his, in his entrance, accompanied by Kurt Angle, cut a mil military hype promo, they got the crowd chanting USA, called out Eric Young and quickly obliged. And then Eric Young defeated Chris Melendez as Young put him down with another pile driver for the victory. Staff started setting up. Still cage for the main event as Chrissy Hemi got the crowd wild up. Chrissy Hemi, Hemi set up a plug for the show Barbecue Pit Masters on the stage. Dollhouse interrupted and pushed the charcoal grill off the stage. Terry Terrell screamed on the microphone. All the way to the ring. All three ladies got in the cage as Taryn Terrell yelled at Gail Kim. Her music cut them off for a few seconds, but she didn't come out. Terrell yelled some more, but nobody can beat her. And Brooke came out and talked her down. She coaxed, co uh, coaxed uh, Terrell into getting out of the cage long enough for the, for the lights to go out. When they come back on, Marty Bell and Jay were locked in the cage with, with Gail Kim. She roughed them up as Brooke ran off Terrell at ringside. Match number eight. Hernandez defeated Lashley in a steel cage match. Shortly after the bell, Kenny King and MVP made their way to ringside. Every time Lashley would attempt to climb the cage, the BDC would interfere. Kenny King climbed the cage from the outside and performed a crossbody from the top onto Lashley, allowing Hernandez to escape the cage to steal the victory in, in the taping. These matches were all out of whack, so they could be taped for, for their dates. Different dates at any times. Happy birthday to Jackie Fargo, born June 26th. He died June 24, 2013. At the age of 82, due to it would have been Jackie Fargo's birthday. But he was born on, in 1930, and he died June 24, 2013. Con congestive heart failure. J.J. Dillon, 73 years old, on June 26th. 1942, Dylan worked as a wrestler and a manager in front of the camera. He also worked in ex as an executive for WWE 
and WCW behind the scenes. He was inducted into the WWE Hall of Fame with the Four Horsemen in 2012. Lucha Underground play-by-play. -play. Voice Mass Striker also had a birthday. Real name Matthew K. Turned 41. He was born June 26, 1974. Mark Jindrak turned 38. He was born June 26, 1977. Jindrak works as Mark Corleone in Mexico. Two-man power trip of wrestling podcast with Gunner. This is the first time Gunner has spoken as he is no longer with TNA. And the interview can be found at tmptow.podomatic.com. Gunner spoke on his departure from TNA. It's no big deal. I tend to keep my positive attitude. And this is my first interview since I parted ways with them, me and TNA, last Friday. And I look forward to whatever the future holds, whether it be an acting or another wrestling company or a promotion. Wrestling fans have definitely not seen the last of Gunner. I've talked to Talent Relations and Dixie and thank them for the opportunity because I've been with them since 2009. Working security and it was just the right time for me to part ways with the company. We left on good terms and I can easily go back and do some more stuff. It's a good, it is a good standing relationship that we have had and still have and I'm thankful for the opportunity. The direction of his character before he left when I did the feud last year with James Storm, it was a, a feud that kind of catapulted my career and catapulted the Gunner character once that ended. We went, we went on with, with me and Sam Chow for four or five months, <clears throat> which I really enjoyed because it was a lot of out of ring action or interaction. Uh, so it was really building the characters of Sam and myself. And it really gave Gunner a new side. I felt uh, me and Sam had a match in Bethlehem, Pennsylvania. That was a real hardcore match that I thought was amazing. The crowd really enjoyed it. And I felt that uh, guys like me and Sam who is no longer with the company as well, were after that underutilized. Certain other guys came in and have had no problem with anyone in the locker room and impact, but I do feel like, especially my character and me as a person, being there since 2009, I feel like I was under, underutilized after that. And this is where Creative missed an opportunity to push, push him, he spoke about. When I wrestled Magnus at the main event in Manchester in 2014, I felt like we needed to keep going with, with what we had, but it was like well, the ball dropped. I don't know if I did something wrong or the writers got lost. I'm just not sure. He comments on feelings of all the changes surrounding the TNA in the past year. My mind, he comments on his mindset. I was always just trying to worry about Gunner Brand or who I was, whatever the, the, they were giving me. I wasn't on TV for more than two or three episodes this year. A lot of reasons are, though, that TNA gave me the opportunity to do, 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 to go, uh, do a couple of mo movies. So that kept me off the screen for a while. When it comes to changes as far as the locker room or the t TV brand, a lot of guys all tend to just hope that this is a good direction for the company. Not many people complain. You just go out there and really do your best. For what you have, and uh, you take the storylines and make it the best what you can. I personally try to keep my nose out of the old political side of pro wrestling because that's one thing I never cared about, anyways. I always worry about my career. I've always been wrestling since 2001, and I still have many more goals to obtain. My interest from WWE to join NXT, I think right now, that is internet hearsay. I personally have a 30-day no-compete clause, which is what you usually have when you leave a company or they release you, so I can't even really talk to anybody. Ultimately, my goal as a kid was to have the WrestleMania moment. I haven't touched base with anybody yet. I hope that in the near future some doors open and I can at least get my foot in the door in NXT. Now you have some old Joe down there and a bunch of amazing talent as part of that company. I would love to have an opportunity to work for those guys. For those guys, working with some old Joe and TNA, he worked a bit of house shows together, and he and we had a few TV spots together. It's one guy that I kind kind of envy Crimson over because Crimson got got to run a few with Joe back in 2013, and there were a few guys that I wanted to work on. A, 
continuous basis, and he was one of them. I have the utmost respect for him, and he taught me so much as far as psychology and something's different with my character and helping with different moves. He's a locker room leader, and you definitely listen to because he has been around. Was he surprised to see Jeff Jarrett returning to TNA? He was. And he has heard that the rumors about it last night and saw tweets that I uh, had a few other guys text me. Not sure if this is for the cross promotion or this is a one time thing. Jeff's heart lies in TNA. He founded and started that company. I worked in an indie show back in 2007. And Jeff spoke highly about me and helped me get my foot in the door alongside Terry Taylor with TNA. So I guess you. You could say he's always been a fan of mine. I grew up watching the guy, and I respect him. He has always been able to shoot straight with me. I have always had a lot of respect for him. Whatever it is, I want to see Impact succeed. I don't want to see TNA fail. I have friends there that have jobs, and it's just another company that needs to flourish more. <clears throat> James Storm is leaving the company after after Slammiversary pay-per-view. Uh, uh, th thanks to Brian Fitz of SportingNews.com, and it is reportedly the Storm has requested his leave and received his release from the company. Storm is scheduled to work with Magnus at the anniversary show. It's a unique st situation as Magnus ha is reportedly leaving the company as well when his deal expires shortly. TNA production staff was informed in a meeting on Thursday that their paychecks. Well, the May TV tapings will not be issued until mid-July at the earliest. According to Brian Fritz of SportingNews.com, Ron and Don Harris recently took over as the heads of the division. And the story notes that they told workers, if you're not happy, just shake our hands and walk away. In other words, basically, just leave the company. Well, if you're not going to get paid, I'd sue you myself. One of the Fritz stories... Story sources noted that the Harris twin just returned after 10 years and thus are obviously not at fault. I will never understand how or why Panda Energy, parent company of TNA, allows this to happen. Confirmed matches for July 1st episode that I finally got. Uh, Orlando, Florida, Universe Studios, courtesy of WrestlingInc.com. Mandrews. Defeated Crazy Steve in a match take for explosion. EC3 defeated Kurt Angle to win the TNA title. Match number two, the Wolves defeated Bobby Roode and Austin Aries to win the TNA titles. Mr. Anderson defeated Bram by disqualification. And that was uh, the results for July 1st episode. So you got three matches. Hmm. We'll wait to see what actually happens on July 1st episode. July the 8th episode from Orlando Universal Studios. Again, courtesy of Wrestling Inc. T. Gray Uno defeated Zima Ion, Rockstar Spud, and Great over the four way to retain the exhibition title. Jesse Goddard defeated Robbie E. in a street fight. Velvet Sky defeated Madison Rain. EC3 hyped the TV return of Dixie Carter. Match number four, Austin Aries and Bobby Roode defeated Mount Hardy in a handicap match. Drew Galloway defeated Abyss. Koya and Manic in a handicap match. Match number five. Match number six, the Wolves de defeated MVP and Kenny King by disqualification when Hernandez interfered. Match number seven, Brooke defeated Taryn Terrell to win the knockout title. Uh, okay, so uh, match number eight, Eric Young defeated Rockstar Spud in a chain match. Match number nine, EC3 defeated Norv Furman to retain the TNA title and then defeated Sharkboy to retain the TNA title. But basically, jobbers. More confirmed date matches. Tate for June. Tw okay, uh, June twenty fifth. Okay, taped on June twenty fifth. Part of July first Impact Wrestling episode. Live on Destination America. Spoilers. Magnus and Mickey James defeated Serena Deeb and James Storm. Hmm. Wasn't mentioned in the previous results. The BDC defeated the Rising in a four versus three handicap elimination match. Terrence Terrell retained the knockout title over Brooke Tessmacher and Awesome Kong. 
Gail Kim was revealed to be the one behind the cryptic videos. She came to the, ca the stage with new gear on and stared Tara down. Thanks to Tara, who, uh, who sent in the following for the impact spoiler spoilers from the tapings as well. 4th of July 1st, always possible. And some of this was taped er out of order. Taped on Wednesday, supposedly, Magnus and Mickey defeated Serena Deeb and James Storm. BDC defeated Rising in a 4 versus 3 handicap match. Taryn Terrell to retain the knockout title over Brooke Tessmacher and also Kong. Gail Kim revealed to be the one behind the cryptic videos. I haven't seen any lately. Hmm, must have been just started on the July 1st episode or, or earlier in the, in the evening. Then she came to the stage with new gear and stared down Terrell. So they got basically duplicate results for that. And then taped on Thursday, Mandrews defeated Crazy Steve for explosion. And Ethan Carter III defeated Kurt Angle to win the World Heavyweight title. The Wolves won two, two falls to one over the Dirty Heels to win the vacant TNA tag titles. Uh, must have been two out, two out of three falls. Stipulation. In ring promo with James Storm introducing. Serena Deep. Hmm. I wonder how that's going to fall out with James Storm leaving TNA. Hmm. Mr. Anderson defeated Bram by disqualification when Bram used to still care, uh, still chair. Uh, Serena, uh, Serena Deeb uh, uh, went to uh, WWE for, for a little while. And had a haircut. Hmm. It was actually bald, I think, on one side. Whatever. Kind of like a spike hairdo. I don't remember. And take for July 8th. Thanks to Tara for, for the following results. Again, could be out of order. T. Gray Uno retained the exhibition title over Zima Ion, Rockstar Spud, and Grado in a fatal four way. And he may be injured in the match. Jesse got doesn't say which guy, just he may be injured in, in, in the match. Jesse Goddard's uh, defeated Robbie E in a street fight. Velvet Sky defeated Madison Rain. Easton Carter III came out and hyped Jason Carter to return to TNA. He said he's a fighting champion, but denies Matt Hardy's request for a title shot. EC3 reveals he's been appointed matchmaker tonight and puts Hardy in a match. Austin Aries, Bobby Roode defeated Matt Hardy in a handicap match. Drew Galloway came out and cut. And the rising is broken up. EC3 come out and to mock him and, and books Drew in a, mat, in a handicap match. Drew Galloway defeated Abyss, Koya, and Manic in a handicap match. The Wolves defeated MVP and Kenny King by disqualification when Hernandez did a run in. Brooke Tess, Tessmacher defeated Terrence Terrell to become the new knockout champion. The lights went out during the match, but and Gail Kim appeared to take out Jade and Martini at ringside. Uh, Martini, uh, Marty at ringside. Lights went went out, and again Gail was gone, leading to the finish. Hmm. Seems like they're copying the Bray Wyatt gimmick. Eric Young defeated Rockstar Spud in a chain match. Ethan Carter III defeated Noah Furman, Furnum, and Shark Boy in singles matches with the World Heavyweight Title on the line. Hmm, they must be doing the John Cena challenge. Hmm. He prepares for a third title defense, but Kurt Angle interrupted and demands his title shot tonight, but it will be taped tomorrow night. He must have ran out of time for that evening. And the results taped for July 15th and the July 22nd episode. Thanks to Tara for following. Spoilers for Orlando should air 15th on the 22nd. Could be out, out of whack, but Kurt Angle defeated Ethan Carter third by disqualification. With the World Heavyweight title on the line. So the champion keeps the title. DQ came in, EC3 knocked the referee out. Dixie Carter made her return as babyface. She admits she was wrong in the past. Tries to talk sense into EC3 and pleads with him, but few are buying it. Grado defeated DJZ Iman for explosion. Brooke Tessmacher defeated Marty with the knockout title on the line. Dixie Carter is in the ring with the TNA roster surrounding it. She reveals the new authority figure in TNA is Bully Ray. Bully comes out and praises the TNA wrestlers and the fans. He says 
He's going to take TNA to the promised land and gets an applause. Next up, we get Drew Galloway winning a 20-man Royal Rumble Battle Royal to become the number one contender to the World Heavyweight title and get a title shot in the same night. Matt Hardy defeated Bobby Roode in a tables match. The Wolves retain the TNA tag titles over Hernandez and Kenny King. EC3 retained the World Heavyweight title over Drew Galloway after Eli Drake turned on Drew. That's the breakup. So there's your out of whack. Results. James Storm called Koya to the ring. Started slapping him around, putting him down. Koya turned baby face and is going to be using his real name. Mahabali Shara. He turned on Storm and he said he loves his country. Tape 4, July 29th. On June 26th. Thanks to Tara for the following results again. As always, they are out of order, so do, uh, be it as it may. Bully Ray suspends Eli Drake without pay for one week due to his interference in last week's title match. Bully threatens to strip e EC3 of the world title, but is letting Ethan pick the simulation for four contender matches. Bram defeated Magnus in the street fight, won in contender matches. James Storm attacked Magnus after the match. Matt Hardy defeated Hernandez, Bram, and Eric Young in the latter match to become the new one, number one contender to EC3. Bram was taken out after Mr. Anderson attacked him. <clears throat> Tape four on June 27th, for the 29th and, and August the 5th. Thanks to Ricky Springfield for the following results. Well, not the same singer. But, uh, Ricky Springfield. Uh, following impact results for the 29th and August 5th, Velvet Sky defeated Madison Rain in an explosion match. Bobby Lashley defeated Tyrus with a spear. Eli Drake defeated Drew Galloway with a roll-up out of nowhere. The heel Drake was said to be impressive. Mr. Anderson defeated Bram. Anderson got a better pop than usual, as it seemed like. As Bram beat him down after the match, Brooke Tessmacher defeated Marty Bell in what may have been a non-title match. Matt Hardy and Jeff Hardy come out to announce that Matt's World Heavyweight title shot against Ethan Carter III will be Full Metal Mayhem match. It's announced that uh, Jeff Jarrett will be going into the Hall of Fame this year. The ceremony took place tonight in the ring and featured D Dixie Carter, Mike Tanay, and Karen Jarrett and Jeff Jarrett. Kurt Angle came out and announced that he is he has a tumor in his neck and must take time off for surgery. He says he will get his rematch against EC3 whenever he wants. As E3 come, comes out and takes credit for the tumor, he attacked Angle. But Chris Melendez came out for the save. Rockstar Spud defeated Austin Aries and Aries is gone for TNA. Stipulation was if Aries won. He got to, to take the Rockstar Spud, the Rockstar name from Spud. But a Spud won. Aries had to leave TNA. This was a great match and very exciting. The next match was James Storm versus Mahabali Shara. Koya won, ended, uh, uh, Koya ended in a DQ with Storm hit, hit him with a cowbell. EC3 defeated Matt Hardy to win the World Heavyweight title. To, eat, eat, to win the World Heavyweight title match, this was the full metal mayhem as E3 won, EC3 won clean. Second with BDC having issues with Hernandez and Kenny King. MVP tried to calm them down. And King walked away mad. Eric Young defeated Chris Melendez. Gail Kim and Brooke Tessmacher attacked Marty Bell and Jade with a steel in a steel cage. With uh, Terrence Terrell running off. Hernandez defeated Lashley in a steel cage match by escaping. And that concludes the results and spoilers for the TNA results, Impact Wrestling. Thanks again. Peace out. God bless. See you. Wanna be you? By the way, if you don't know, you better call me, bro.